Narada said, O oh Brahma, thanks to Shiva's favor, you know everything. You have narrated to me the wonderful stories of Shiva and Parvati. O oh Lord, I am never fully satiated by hearing the great story of Shiva from your lotus-like face. I wish to hear further the same. As explained by you, Rudra is the complete manifestation of Shiva. He is the great Lord, whose abode is Kailash. He is a yogin of perfect control. He is worthy of being propitiated by all devas, Vishnu and others. He is the final goal of all good men. He is free from dvandvas, mutually clashing opposites. The great Lord never undergoes any change, yet indulges in his divine sports. He became a householder again after marrying the noble Lady Mangala at the request of Vishnu when she performed penance. At first she was born of Daksha and later of Himalaya. How could she be the daughter of both with the same body? How did Sati become Parvati and attain Shiva again? O Brahma, please explain all these and other points relating to his episode. On hearing these words of the celestial sage devoted to Shiva, Brahma became delighted and spoke again. O oh best of sages, dear one, listen. I shall narrate the auspicious story, on hearing which undoubtedly the life will become fruitful. Formerly, on seeing my daughter Sandhya in the company of my sons, I was afflicted by the arrows of the Cupid and very much upset. When remembered by Dharma, Rudra, the highest lord and the greatest yogin, came there. He reproached me as well as my sons and went back to his abode. A serious offense was committed by me against Shiva, the great lord, by whose maya I was subjected to great delusion, despite my being the reciter of the Vedas. Under great delusion and goaded by the envious feelings toward the Lord, I conspired with my sons to find out ways and means to delude the Lord himself. Here again I was deluded by Shiva's maya. O oh, great sage, in Shiva the great Lord, all those ways and means pursued by me and my sons became ineffective. When my strategy failed, I remembered the Lord of Lakshmi, Vishnu, in the company of my sons. The intelligent Lord Vishnu, devoted to Shiva, came there and advised me. Instructed by Vishnu, who demonstrated Shiva's principles, I cast off my envy, no doubt, but since I was still under delusion, I did not eschew my stubbornness. I humbly served Shakti, and when she was pleased, I created her as the daughter of Daksha and his wife Asikni. Daksha, you remember, was my son. This was my endeavor to make Hara enamored of her. The goddess Uma became Daksha's daughter, performed a severe penance, and thanks to her great devotion, became Rudra's wife. The goddess indeed is a benefactress of her devotees. In the company of Uma, Rudra became a householder, and the great lord performed divine sports. He of undecaying intellect deluded me, even at the time of his marriage. The independent lord, assuming his own body, married her and returned to his mountain. In her company he sported much, deluding many. O sage, much time was happily spent by Shiva, free from all depraved feelings and indulging in noble dalliance with her. Then a feeling of rivalry arose between Daksha and Rudra. Daksha was excessively deluded by Shiva's illusion, and so becoming extremely haughty, he censured the quiet Shiva, who was free from all depraved feelings. Then Daksha, the haughty, performed a sacrifice without Shiva, although he had invited Vishnu, me, and all other devas. Since he was in delusion, he was very furious, so he did not invite Rudra and his own daughter Sati. 
He was greatly deluded by his own fate. When she was not invited by her father, whose mind was deluded by illusion, Shiva, sati of perfect knowledge and purest chastity, played a divine sport. Though not invited by her haughty father, she did go to her father's house, securing the reluctant permission of Shiva. Seeing no share of the sacrifice set apart for Rudra, and being slighted by her father, she reproached all those who were present there and cast off her body. On hearing that, Lord Shiva became unbearably furious and pulling at his matted hair, created Virabhadra. When he was created along with attendants, he began asking, what shall I do? The entire annihilation of Daksha's sacrifice and the disgrace of everyone present there was the order issued by Shiva. The lord of the Ganas, Virabhadra, accompanied by his soldiers, reached the place immediately after receiving the orders. They worked a great havoc there. Virabhadra chastised everyone and spared none. After defeating Vishnu and the Devas with strenuous effort, the chief of Ganas cut off the head of Daksha and consigned it to the sacrificial fire. Working great havoc, he destroyed the sacrifice. Then he came back to the mountain and bowed to Lord Shiva. Even as the whole of the world of Devas witnessed, the destruction of the sacrifice was carried out by Virabhadra and others, the followers of Rudra. The policy in agreement with what is laid down in the Vedas and Smritis is this, O sage, which you must note. When Lord Rudra is angry, how can there be happiness in the world? On hearing his song of praise, Rudra relented. Favorably disposed to the miserable that he was, he granted their request. Shiva, the great lord, indulging in different sorts of divine sports, became sympathetic and merciful as before. Daksha was resuscitated. The whole sacrifice was renewed under the instruction of the merciful Lord Shiva. All those present were honored in due manner. O sage, in that sacrifice Rudra was honored by all the gods with due devotion. They were highly delighted. The flame of fire arising from the body of Sati and delighting the whole world fell on that mountain, and it was duly worshipped. The deity became famous as Jwala Mukhi, yielding fruits of cherished desires. Even her very vision quells all sins. Even now she is worshipped with due festivities for the acquisition of all desires, observing all stipulated modes of procedure. The goddess Sati became the daughter of Himalaya. As such, she became famous as Parvati. She propitiated Lord Shiva with a rigorous penance and attained him as her husband. O great sage, I have narrated to you all that you asked me. Whoever hears this narrative will no doubt be freed from all sins.